Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. Yesterday I received an email from Oliver Whiffen. In that email, Oliver sent me this image and he asked me if I could explain to him how to replace the background in it. Well, I told Oliver that it's a little difficult to try to explain how to replace a background in an image in an email. But if he'd allow me to use his image in a video, I could teach everyone how to replace the background in his image. And he graciously allowed me to use his shot. So this is his image of an osprey landing on that tree branch. Now, I'm going to teach you how to do it in Photoshop. And I know many of you don't use Photoshop. Now, unfortunately, this isn't something that you could do in Lightroom. Lightroom won't allow you to replace a background in an image. You need an application that has layers and masking. So I'm also, at the end of the video, going to show you how to do it in Luminar because I know many of you do use Luminar. But we're going to start, start out in Photoshop. Now, when you open a RAW file directly into Photoshop, it's going to open up into Adobe Camera Raw. Adobe Camera Raw uses the same process engine as the develop module of Lightroom. So it really does the same thing. It's just cosmetically and the workspace are different. So I did some basic processing to it. Now, typically I like to crop early in my workflow, but whenever you're replacing a background in an image, I encourage you not to crop, replace the background first, then do the cropping toward the end. So we're gonna crop this image later uh, because it does need to be cropped. But uh, right now we're gonna leave it at its full resolution with just some minor processing done to it. Now to get it into Photoshop, down here at the lower right hand side of Adobe Camera Raw, we just click on open image and it will take this raw file and open it up into Photoshop. Now also in Photoshop, I have an image of some clouds that I have. So we're going to take these clouds and we're going to put it in this image. So what we need to do to begin with is we need to get the clouds that are on this tab onto the same tab as the Osprey. So to do that, go to the clouds, get the move tool. The keyboard shortcut for the move tool is the V key. V is in victory. And also in the description below the video, I'll have a list of all the keyboard shortcuts I happen to mention in this video. All right, so we have the move tool. It's a very top tool over here. Just grab the tool, click on it with the left mouse button and drag it up to the tab that has the Osprey. Then drag down over the image. Now hold the shift key in when you drop it and it will drop it right in the middle. So it's dropped right in the middle over the top of the Osprey image. And you can see over the right, on the right hand side at the layers panel, it's on top. Now, it just so happens that my cloud image is much bigger than the Osprey image. If you do this, you may encounter your cloud image to be much smaller. If you do encounter that, what you need to do is kind of stretch out the clouds so they fit over the uh, image you're replacing the sky in. Now to do that, I'm just going to show you, I don't have to do it on this image. Just take Command or Control T on your keyboard. It's Command T on a Mac, Control T on a PC, and you'll get these handles. Now you can see this, these handles indicate the actual size of my cloud image. And you can see if I kind of just move it around, how large it is. So mine fits. If yours doesn't fit, these, this box would be inside of the Osprey image and you just drag those handles out till it totally covers the Osprey image and then click the check mark when you're done. All right, now I have the clouds above the Osprey. I need to get it underneath the Osprey. So go over here on the uh, panels uh, or the, um, the layers panel and you can see the very uh, bottom is the background layer. Click on this little lock to unlock it. Then just drag it above the clouds. Now we have the Osprey above the clouds. Now we need to make a selection of the sky on this layer here. Now to do that, we're going to get, I, now to just give you some background, I tried this a few different ways because there's several different ways you could do this in Photoshop. And the best way that I found to do it is to use the magic wand tool. The keyboard shortcut for the magic wand tool is W. But when you do that, the magic wand tool shares that keyboard shortcut with two other tools. It's located over here. It's the fourth tool from the top. And if you click and hold with the left mouse button, you can see there's the object selection tool, the quick selection tool, and the magic wand tool. Make sure you click the magic wand tool. Use a point sample 
Tolerance around 11 is good. You can mess around with the numbers a little bit if you're not getting a good selection. But these, I believe, are the default settings. Um, I'm going to leave contiguous on because mostly it's contiguous what I need to adjust or need to select, I mean. And the bird has some white in it, and I don't want it to select any of the bird. So I'm going to click, and hopefully it won't select any of the bird that I don't want selected. I just want the background selected. So I'm just going to click once over here with the left mouse button. And you can see it selected most of the white, but down here it missed some because of contiguous um, was checked. There's kind of a, some little like, uh, I don't know, strands of vines or something on this tree. So it didn't get in here. So I need to select that as well. Now, if I need to add to the selection, I need to hold the shift key in when I do it. You can see the cursor there when I'm in there. The cursor turns, it gets a plus sign next to it. So we'll click right there. So we're adding that part. We're going to add this part. We're going to add all these little tiny nooks and crannies in here. And down in here, down in here. Let's see if I missed anywhere else in there, in there, in there. Now we're going to refine this later. Just make sure that you got pretty much everywhere that you need to get. And that looks pretty good. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go up to the top where it says Select and Mask, and we're going to click on that. Now we have this image here where we selected the background. Well, ultimately, really, what we need selected is the bird and the tree, not the background. So we really need to invert this. So over on the right, there's a little Invert button. Click right there, and you can see now we have a selection of the bird, but you can see we have a lot of parts we miss, like there's little white spots uh, between the talons of the osprey and over here on the tree also. So what we're going to do is we're going to refine this edge. We're going to go here on the far left and we're going to get the refine edge brush tool. It has a keyboard shortcut of R. And we're just going to get this brush and we're going to paint wherever that white is to try to get a better selection. So we could get a better selection around the talons down here like this. Now this might take you a little while. I'm going to go relatively quickly, but if you take your time at this step, you'll get the best selection possible and it will look the best uh, possible. But I'm just going to do the best I can for I, so it's quick, <laughs> so I don't bore you guys to death and you fall asleep. And then your significant other says, you fell asleep watching one of Morganti's videos again. And anyway, so I'm going to try to go as quickly as possible. But I want to get as much of the obvious stuff as, mu as I can, all right? So we'll go down in here, go down in here, go down in here, and there, and there, 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 go down in here. There's a lot of little like, uh, like nooks and crannies around this old dead tree. So there's a lot of little white areas that I'm not sure you could see on the um, on the video, but I could definitely see them on my monitor and they'll be very obvious once that background pops in. So I want to try to take my time. Now as you look at the osprey itself, you can see that there's a little white fringing on the edge of the bird's wings. So what I want to do is I want to try to eliminate that as much as possible. So I'm going to come in here and try to get all that and over in here, and over in here. So again, the the more fastidious you are in this stage, the better the overall um, replacement of the sky will look when you're done. Now, the very tip of the osprey's right wing, you can see there's a lot of uh, white uh, edging and haloing around that. I'm going to stay away from that because I'm, there's, those are so thin, I'm afraid that I'm going to obliterate those. You may have noticed uh, down here on the tree, there was a lot of those little like strands here. And when I paint on those, I'm basically eliminating those, like I'm getting rid of those. And that's okay on the tree if they're not there, because no one's even going to know they were there. But on the Osprey, that's not so good if, 
um, the osprey is missing part of its wing. So I want to avoid that. So, all right, we have this osprey selected as best I could to make it kind of quick so I don't bore you to tears. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to output it to a selection. And you'll notice I really didn't do anything over here. I really didn't need to. I just wanted to make sure that um, I refine the edge as good as I could uh, to include as much of the osprey as possible and get rid of as much of the background as possible. And we're going to output it to the selection and we're going to click OK. And when we do that, we're back into Photoshop and we just have the osprey selected. Now, what we need to do is just get a layer mask. Just go down here in the lower right hand side and click on mask. And what you'll see is suddenly all that background is gone and the osprey and the tree are there. Now, it doesn't look quite right, obviously. I mean, the wing tips over here don't look right. The tree just doesn't look quite right yet. So we do have quite a bit of work to do. Now, what I'm going to do next um, requires that the osprey and tree are cut out without using a mask so that we have to eliminate this mask. And there's a couple ways to do it, but really the easiest way is just to right click on the mask and go to apply layer mask. And when you do that, the, mayor le uh, the layer mask is gone. But if I click, you can see it just clipped away the background. So now we have just the osprey and tree on this layer and the background on the layer below. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that I'm clicked on layer zero, which is the layer with the osprey. And I'm going to go up to layer and then down to matting. And then we're going to go to defringe. And you don't need a lot, a uh, big number here. As a matter of fact, you could put like, you know, a big number here and it won't work any better than if you had a smaller number. And what's the smaller number? Well, between one and four pixels. So I'm just going to put three, three pixels. And when I do that, look at like the, uh, the edge of this um, Osprey's wings and you'll see how those will improve. So I'm just going to click once and you can see how it all improved. It seemed to improve the look. Uh, gave more pixels of the osprey into the image. Now, uh, there's still a tiny bit of white fringing here and there. So what we're going to do is we're going to go up to layer, down to matting, remove white mat. And when I do that, you can see how it kind of filled out a little bit better. So, so far, so good. Now, um, this lighting seems to match pretty good. So what I'm going to show you next is really kind of optional. If the sky is a totally different color temperature than, let's say, you're replacing uh, the sky in an image with a bird in it, like I am. So if the sky is a completely different color temperature than your actual image with the bird in it, then what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to match the color temperature uh, in that bird image, so it or adjust the color temperature in the bird image so it matches the color temperature in the sky. Now, the way I do it, there's all different ways, like in Photoshop, there's all different ways to do this. The way that I do it, most often, is I'll click on the image with the sky and I'll duplicate it. So I'll hit Command J on my Mac. It's Control J if you have a PC. I'll drag that to the top of the layers stack. When I do that, of course, it's covering up the bird. Then what I'll do is I'll go up to Filter, Blur, Average. And when you do that, what it does, it just takes every pixel that is in the image and just averages it out in color. So we get this color tone all of a sudden. Well, it's still covering up the bird image, right? So we need it so it just, um, just is applied to the bird image and not applied to the layer below it, which is the sky image. So what we need to do is we need to clip it to the bird image so it only affects the bird image. Now to do that, Go over between the two layers. In my case, it's called layer one copy and layer zero. Go between the layers, hold the ultra option key when you do go in between, and you'll see your cursor turns into this weird kind of symbol. Just click once. And now what it's doing is it's clipped to the bird. You can see it's only affecting the bird and the stump. It's not anywhere else. So good. Now what we do, change the blend mode to overlay or soft light. Depends, some work better than others. 
In this case, let's go with soft light. In this image, as I mentioned, really didn't need it. The color temps were similar, but I'm just showing you this because this is something you may run into. Then bring the opacity down if you need to, like that. All right. And now we could crop. So we'll go to the crop tool. The keyboard shortcut for the crop tool is C. In this case, I'm just going to bring it in quite a bit. So we're getting a pretty substantial crop on this image. And we'll click like there. So there is our new sky in the image. Now it's a little blue because I added that. But we don't need that in this image, this, this one. So, um, so we're done in Photoshop. That's how you go about doing it in Photoshop. Um, as I mentioned, it's a multi-step process. And there's a lot of different ways you could do it. I, using the Magic Wand tool, I found to be the fastest and easiest way. Now, I mentioned that I'll show you how to do it in Luminar. It's considerably easier in Luminar. Now, I have the uncropped image in Luminar. And we're going to replace it with the same sky that I used in the Photoshop um, video. So to do that, we'll go to the Creative tab, and we're going to go to AI Sky Replacement. And we're going to go to uh, Sky Selection. Then we're going to load a custom sky image. We're going to use the same exact sky. And the sky's on my desktop in my Photoshop video folder. It's right there called Clouds-1. We're going to click Open. And you're going to see, like magic, it replaced the sky. <laughs> so now we could crop it from this point on. Yeah. Grab this corner. Bring it down like I did the last one. Move it over a little bit done and we're done in luminar so luminar is a lot quicker uh, whether or not it's better or not i'm not sure it's a little more difficult to move the sky around in luminar that's what i forgot to show you in photoshop i apologize for it um, let's go back to photoshop and i want to uh, undo my crop so i'm going to hit command uh, z on my keyboard that's the undo command uh, command zebra it's control zebra on a pc uh, then if you want to move the background image around to place it better, click on the image layer that has the, the um, sky in it. Get the move tool, and then you could just drag it around and move it uh, how you want it. Now, if you go too far, you're going to start getting those blank pixels, but you could readjust it. Now, in Luminar, it's a little more difficult uh, because you'd have to go... Uh, to this setting and you'd have to try to move like the horizontal position so you can move it up or down like that but that's how you do it in luminar you can basically move it up or down um, so those are the two different methods um, to replace the sky one in photoshop and one in luminar thank you oliver Whiffen, for sharing your image with us and thank you everyone who watches my videos I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.